Hello everyone and welcome to another NCE slash CPCE exam prep video. I guess CPC exam is redundant. Um, anyway, sorry, welcome. And um, if you've never been to my channel before, I just go over practice questions and read them out loud. They're not really high quality. They're just for you to have something to listen to on your um, way to your internship or your way to your job or when you're cleaning your house or when you're washing your dog or anything like that. So as usual, I'm just going to hop into it. Number 34. Oh, this is a long one. Okay. Your patient enters your session excited about the new age therapy you tried last session. She had brought in an article and because of her enthusiasm and the fact that it did not require any new training, you'd agreed to give it a try. She, she asked you to continue during this session, but you've done your homework and it's been proven ineffective and in a select few clients the condition was slightly worsened. You validate your patient, noting, noting how glad you are that she's excited to try something new. Then you tell her that, unfortunately, you won't be able to continue with these types of treatments. With this act, you are expressing A. Anti-consumerism B. Beneficence C. Exploitation or D. Non-malfeasance and the answer is D, non-malfeasance, is refraining from providing ineffective treatments or acting with malice toward a patient. Anti-consumerism is not a real thing, and beneficence is incorrect because it means that you take action to benefit others. Exploitation is incorrect because it is a therapist's misuse of power to influence and exploit clients for their own benefit and to the client's detriment. Um, so for non-malfeasance, one way to remember it was that um, it is acting with malice and doing something bad and malefic uh, I think I'm assuming that's where Maleficent comes from, who was the bad witch. So non-malfeasance, Maleficence, bad, don't do bad to your client. Uh, oh, and a side note for all of you, I passed my CPCE yesterday. And tomorrow I'm taking my NCE, so yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, uh, number 35, you've just launched a successful therapy group and want to promote it to engage new clients so that they too can benefit. You've asked your current therapy client to offer an anonymous testimonial telling others how useful it has been. From an ethical standpoint, this is A, prohibited under any circumstances, B, Allowed, since it is a successful group that would benefit future clients that may enjoy. C. Allowed, only if they sign a voluntary testimonial release. Or D. Prohibited, unless they sign a voluntary testimonial release, use a pseudoname, and do not provide a photo. The answer is A. It is a no-no. The ACA Code of Ethics outlines that testimonials from clients, former clients, or any other person vulnerable to undue influence is prohibited. Number 36. You are a licensed professional counselor, which means you passed your exam, woohoo! With a master's degree in counseling and a doctorate in technology and operations management. On your appointment cards for clients, the most appropriate way to list yourself is A. Jane Doe, MA, LPC, B, Jane Doe, Dr. Jane Doe, LPC, C, Jane Doe, PhD, or D, Dr. Jane Doe, PhD, LPC, LMNOP. And the answer is A, Jane Doe, MA, LPC. According to the ACA Code of Ethics, when acting in a counselor context, counselors may only use their highest degree earned in counseling and should not imply doctorate level competence unless their doctorate degree is in a clinical or related field. Number 37. It is blank to administer a test to a client from a certain population when the test has not been normed to that population. A. Appropriate. B unethical, C, illegal, D, unfair. The answer is B, unethical. If a test has not been normed to a certain population, it is unethical to administer it to a person from that population and the client's results will not be accurate. Normed tests compare and rank the test takers in relation to one another. 38, nosology, I think I'm saying that right, the process of formal diagnosis is most closely related to 
A. Sampling B. Individualized education plans C. Psychoanalysis or D. The medical model and The answer is D. The medical model The most recent revision helped align the DSM with the ICD-11. ICD the DSM-5 provides researchers clinicians and health officials with a standard language to use when communicating about mental disorders. The ICD-11 is used by medical professionals to diagnose medical conditions. Do, 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 do. Most IEPs do not contain a formal diagnosis, but the diagnosis is used to help guide what accommodations and modifications go into the IEP to help the student. All right, uh, and on to appraisal number 39. Your supervisor suggests that you give your client a Beck's Depression Inventory Test, BDI. This is an A, Aptitude Test, B, Intelligence Test, C, Self-Report Test, or D, Achievement Test. And the answer is, oh, uh, let's see, wait, uh, Self-Report Test, C, Self-Report Test. Tests that measure criterion based on a patient's report are called Self-Report Tests. Do, 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 do. All right, number 40, self-report tests like the BDI. A, consistently and accurately measure its intended criterion regardless of internal or environmental factors. B, depend much on the present state of the person taking it. C, may not always be accurate. Or D, both B and C. And the answer is D, both B and C. Self-report tests, by their very nature, make accuracy difficult. They can be useful tools to assess current symptoms, however, and can be administered multiple times to gauge changes. Gauge changes. Number 41, which of the following is not considered a subjective test? A, Rorschach, B, TAT, C, the WISC-3, or D, none, all are subjective. I wonder if this is pronounced tat. Anyway, the answer is the WISC-3. It is not subjective, it is an intelligence test. The Rorschach and the tat, or T-A-T, are, are both subjective. All right, moving on. Number 42, ipsative measures. Ipsative measures A, compare traits within the same individual. B, compare traits of people who took the assessment. C, Contrast rates with other personality factors. Contrast. Contrast rates. Contrast. Contrast. Wow, that sounds really weird. Right? Sorry. D. Show what a client needs to improve. Ipsative is A. Compare traits within the same individual. Contrast. Contrast. Compare and contrast. Contrast. Oh my goodness, I'm losing it. Um, uh, ipsative <laughs> measures are sometimes referred to as forced choice scale. When given two choices, the respondent needs to pick the one that's most preferred. One way to remember this is that ipsative starts with an I, and when you're comparing traits within the same individual, examples of questions could be, I am a hard worker, and I am um, lazy. And so you're just comparing two different things in that same person, and it starts with I. 43. Personality tests or interest inventories measure A. Goals B. Maximum performance C. Typical performance or D. Academic potential And the answer is C. Typical performance This shows how someone will perform on a regular basis. Maximum performance shows how someone will perform when exerting as much effort as possible, such as when someone is being observed. Number 44, reliability tells A, if a test measures what it says it measures, B, how consistently a test measures an attribute, C, if the client can be trusted, or D, where the counseling process should focus. And the answer is B, how consistently a test measures an attribute. Reliability is a key part of assessment. The scale needs to provide consistent results over repeated measurements. If a test measures what it says it measures, the test is valid. Reliability and validity are independent of each other. A test can be both reliable and valid, reliable but not valid, or not reliable but valid. 
I've always thought that was confusing. Anyways, let's see. But yeah, we've just got a few more. Let's keep going. 45. When you see the letter P in relation to a test of significance, it means A, probability, B, possibility, C, positive, or D, psychoanalysis. The answer is A, probability. Most researchers use a P value of 0 0.05 as a cutoff for significance. If it's less than 0 0.05, the null hypothesis is rejected and it is concluded significance does not exist. All right. An operational definition is A. De uh, sorry, an operational definition A is deductive logic. B can be measured on a Likert scale. C outlines a procedure. Or D describes the purpose of an experiment. And the answer is C outlines a procedure. An operational definition is a detailed, clear, and concise definition of a measured use of a measure used when data is being collected. If no more than one researcher is setting out to measure the same conditions, they should be able to independently do so. In the case of measuring anxiety in college seniors, a researcher chooses to give the participants a 15-item questionnaire. The researcher's operational definition, definition of anxiety for this study is the participant's score on the questionnaire. Just read it out loud, but I have no idea what any of that means. All right, 47. Which of the following are not included as a concept of deductive reasoning? A, minor premise. B, obvious conclusion. C, medium premise. Or D, major premise. The answer is C, medium premise. Aristotle discussed the use of major premise, a related minor premise, and an obvious conclusion as a part of deductive reasoning. Number 48. Using deductive reasoning to gain knowledge has been called A. Qualitative research B. Quantitative research C. Syllogism or D. Cross-section research The answer is C. Syllogism. Knowledge can be gained with a particular relationship by following downward from general to specific for instance, in general, people with depression are sad. Sally is sad. Sally has depression. Sorry, Sally. But we're here to help you, or we will be, if we pass this test. 49. Joni is a part of a research experiment monitoring energy level and depression. She becomes pregnant and tells you that she has been very fatigued. Her tiredness is A, a dependent variable, B, an intervening variable, A, or C, a correlate, or D, all of the above? And the answer is B, an intervening variable. These are variables that may alter the outcome of a research experiment. They are difficult to control for. Other examples include motivation and boredom. Number 50. A blank is a form of descriptive research and requires a return rate of 50 to 57 percent to be accurate. A. Case study. B. Observation. C. Survey. Or D. Analysis. And the answer is survey. There are three basic types of descriptive research. Survey, observation, and case study. Conclusions from descriptive research cannot be drawn, thus no causal relationships can be determined. The survey requires 50 to 57 percent to be returned to be returned in order to be accurate. All right, guys. Descriptive research is survey, observation, and case study. So, SOC, S-O-C, survey, observation, and case study, and descriptive. One way to remember that could be that descriptive you're describing something and what it looks like because you've lost your sock and you're describing it to someone to try to find it because all socks go missing it's a law i'm not sure that's helpful or not as usual my kind of remembering devices are a little wonky but i hope it might have been helpful you guys are awesome keep at it keep studying you can do this